Hey, I was recently asked if it would be better to use take or take until destroyed when issuing an HTTP request with HTTP client. In this video, we examine the take operator and evaluate its use with HTTP operations. We crack open the Angular and RxJS source code, then we compare the take and take until destroyed operators for use in HTTP requests. Let's take a look. The RxJS take operator emits a specified number of items from an observable. It automatically completes after taking the specified number of items. It's great for limiting unlimited observables. I'm in StackBlitz. Here is a sample application that I've built in prior videos. The link to this code is in this video's notes. In the to-do list component, I'll add some code to demonstrate the take operator. Here we create an observable that emits a set of numbers. But you can imagine in a real application, this would be an observable emitting from a timer or subject. What will we see in the console? Yep, we see the take operator emits 2 and 3, and then completes the observable. The remaining numbers aren't emitted. Let's add some complexity. I'll insert a filter above the take and a tap after the take. And let's turn the one-line arrow function in the filter operator into a multi-line arrow function. I'll add curly braces and a return statement. Then add some logging within the filter so we know the filter is being executed. Now what will we see in the console? The observable emits 2, which passes through the filter and is taken by the take operator and emitted from the pipeline. The observable emits 3. The 3 is processed by the filter operator, but does not pass through the filter and is not taken or emitted. Then the observable emits 4, which passes through the filter, is taken and emitted from the pipeline. So this take emits 2 and 4 and completes the observable. Now let's move the filter to the end of the pipeline. What will we see? Scrolling the console window, the pipeline only emits 2. Is that what you expected? The observable emits 2, which is taken. It passes through the filter operator and is emitted from the pipeline. The observable emits 3, which is taken. It's processed by the filter operator, but does not pass through the filter and is not emitted from the pipeline. But the take operator has now taken two items and completes the observable, even though only one of the items was emitted from the pipeline. So the take takes the specified number of items and completes the observable. I'll comment this out, but leave it here in the sample code for you to try out. Now, what about using take with an HTTP request? Let's look at the to-do service. I'll remove the take until destroyed, and let's uncomment the logging so we can see the emitted value. Scrolling the console and drilling down, we see the data, then get is complete. What would adding a take one here do? Nothing, basically. All HTTP requests are one and done. That means that the response is emitted and the observable completes. No need for a take one. Same is true with other HTTP requests, such as put, post, or delete. These HTTP requests are one and done, so take one doesn't do anything. I'll remove this code. To confirm that the HTTP requests indeed complete after they emit, let's take a quick look at the source code. I'm in the Angular GitHub repository, HTTP SRC folder, looking at the xhr.ts file. Here is the code that executes our HTTP requests. Scrolling down to the return statement, we see that the code sets up a new observable. We aren't going to go through all of this code, but if we scroll down to if OK on line 209, we see that if the request returns a successful response, the code calls observable.next to emit that response. 
Then on line 222, the code calls the observable complete method, thereby completing the observable. So, after an HTTP request receives a response, that response is emitted and the observable is completed. What about take until destroyed? Let's jump over to the source code for that. The take until destroyed operator was introduced in Angular version 16. It automatically completes unsubscribing from the observable when its component or service is destroyed. This prevents potential memory leaks and doesn't require a manual unsubscribe. I covered this useful operator in detail in my prior video, Use Take Until Destroyed to unsubscribe from Angular's observables, and then walk through why we should not use Take Until Destroyed when issuing put, post, or delete requests. In this prior video, don't use Take Until Destroyed with Angular's HTTP put, post, or delete. Looking at line 23, we see the implementation of Take Until Destroyed. It creates a destroy ref if one isn't provided. It sets up an onDestroy handler. Looking at line 35, it then uses the RxJS take until operator to automatically complete when the component or service is destroyed. Let's also take a quick look at the source code for the take operator. It's in the RxJS repository. The take operator starts here on line 47. This code keeps track of the number of emissions it has seen. If the number is less than the count passed into the operator, it calls next to emit the value. And when that seen number equals the count, it calls next to emit that value and calls complete to complete the observable. Going back to the code. So, when should we use take versus take until destroyed? Use take with unlimited observables, such as timer or subject, to limit the number of emissions. The take will complete the observable when the specified number of emissions are taken. Use take until destroyed to unsubscribe from long-running operations, such as a timer or a subject. This completes the observable. Since take until destroyed executes when the component or service is destroyed, it prevents potential memory leaks. I demonstrated that in my prior take until destroyed video. Since an HTTP GET operation is one and done, we don't need to worry about memory leaks, and using take doesn't do anything. However, consider using take until destroyed to cancel the get operation when the user navigates away before the data is returned. Using take until destroyed completes the observable, which prevents any pipeline operators or the subscribe handler from executing when the data is later returned. Same with the HTTP put, post, or delete operations. Using take doesn't do anything. But unlike retrieve operations, the user most likely does not want to cancel their modifications when navigating away. So don't use take until destroyed with these operations. Thanks for watching, and if this content was useful, please like and subscribe.